Ooh. Inmates, inmates, inmates. Here we are again, back in the barn. It's really cold. Sorry about the background noise. I've got to have the heater on. It's minus temperatures. It's zero right now. It was minus two earlier. We're now at zero. You know, we've had a lot of snow, so it's cold. We need to put that heater on. So apologies for the background noise. Right, so if you haven't seen it already, we've just done the D4 install. If you haven't seen that, click on the link up above. And now what we're going to do is we're going to fit the sound bomb. But there's obviously some sound bomb options. Now you've got the mini sound bomb, you've got the split sound bomb, and you've got the compact sound bomb. The compact sound bomb is the one we're going to fit today, but I'm going to quickly chuck on the mini sound bomb as well. So first we'll take a look at the mini sound bomb. This is it, nice and small, very compact design, but obviously it's not the compact. If the compact is the compact, this is the mini. So the mini sound bomb claims to be 113 decibels in sound, and it's supposed to be two times louder than a standard horn. Me personally, I still prefer the full compact sound bomb, the full, you know, the f which is four times as loud, and that claims to be 120 decibels. Now those extra seven decibels, I'm telling you, Every single decibel is count because it's so much louder. Let's put on the mini sound bomb now. Now, I've had a few people ask how you fit it and do it has to go through a relay. The mini sound bomb does not need to go through a relay on a GS or a GSA or possibly an RT or any of the BMW range, but de definitely not on a GS. So I'm going to show you how you put that on now. First of all, we're going to take the original OEM horn off the bike, like so. Now we're going to grab the new horn and it's not a straightforward fit. It doesn't fit easily. So you're gonna to have to do a bit of pushing and a bit of shoving. And the bit of pushing and shoving, it's just plastic ABS um, trim that's underneath the bike. It's not your main fairing. You're not, you're not bending anything on the outside of the bike. It's just some of that protective plastic uh, trim underneath. If you wanted to, you could go to the further trouble of making your own mount so it fits and it's not clashing against anything. But I'm quite happy with the way it is going together on here right now. As you can see, it, it looks great. It's uh, Nothing's in the way. You're not going to see any of this because it's completely hidden. And it's going to be that little bit extra louder as well. Now, to make the connection between the OEM plug on the bike and the two contacts on the mini sound bomb, you could, if you wanted to, but I wouldn't advise you to, you could, if you wanted to, just cut the plug off and make your own connections. But who would be so stupid to do such a thing? So if you, if you want to, you can buy this product from me. This is the adapter which sits between the OEM plug on the BMWs and the horn. So it's, uh, I can't remember how much it is, it's not very much money, but here it is here, and I'll put a link down below in the description so you can buy that from me directly. I keep loads of those in stock all the time. And then you just plug that into the OEM harness and then plug either, either side into, onto either of the contacts, and there you go, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> is Bob your uncle a term that's used globally, internationally? Probably not, <laughs> but basically, you're done. <laughs> so that's the mini sound bomb. Let's give it a blast. And I've got no dash errors on the dash at all either. Don't believe me? Can I have a look? There we are. Okay, so that's how you put the mini sound bomb on. Now let's move on to the split sound bomb. Now, why would you buy the split sound bomb over the compact sound bomb? Because Denali have made a bike specific horn mount for the compact sound bomb to go between the forks. However, there's two main reasons why you would use a split sound bomb on a GS over the compact sound bomb. The first one is, well, BMW decided to bring out a lower suspension version of the GS for the, the guys amongst us who are vertically challenged. I don't have that problem. If you have got a lower suspension bike, then I really would not advise you to put the compact sound bomb on your bike between the forks. You need to come up with a different place of mounting it. Now you could just continue buying the compact sound bomb and mount it elsewhere on your bike. You could mount it externally. It's a big old bulky unit to stick externally on your bike though. Or you can buy the split sound bomb and you can take the compressor part of the split sound bomb, just the compressor, 
and mount that between the forks. And then the horn, the, the, the actual thing that makes the, the sound, which is very, very light, you literally strap it, strap it anywhere on your bike. And it comes with big, thick, heavy duty zip ties to do the job. Now, don't worry about it. It might look ugly, but you can't see it. It's behind fairing panels. You can hide the stuff. Now, I've done one before on a GS. I'll try and find that video. So you've got a link up, a link upstairs to that one or a link down below where I had a customer bring a bike in and he went the full hog. He had everything on his bike. It wasn't a lower suspension, but there's a reason why he had to have a split sound bomb. And that's the second reason I'm coming on to. It's because he had Vandalish upper crash bars on his BMW GS, not the GS Adventure, the GS. Now, because he had those aftermarket crash bars, this compact sound bomb mount, which Denali do, which goes between the forks, uses the exact same spot on the bike where you mount your upper crash bars and it couldn't share the same place. Now, I have done it before where I have actually made something in the workshop, like elongated the mount so it does fit, but it's not ideal. I really wouldn't advise this. So you need to be able to move the sound bomb to a different location. So with his one, I actually mounted the sound part, the actual horn part of the split sound bomb to the crash bar using a crash bar mount which I'll put a link on my website to that. I'll show you a picture from the screen right now as well of that, which, is, which um, you can mount onto any crash bar. And I, and I attached the horn part to that underneath the nose of the bike so you couldn't see it. And then I took the compressor part and I mounted that right up next to the forks underneath his, underneath his dash, like to the side of his dash. So you could see it when you're sitting on the bike riding it. If you didn't know it, you wouldn't think anything of it. It just looks like a nice fancy component that's stuck down on the side. It wasn't in the way of anything. So that's what we did with his because he wanted the sound bomb, but we, if we had stuck with the compact sound bomb, well, that would have been too big to mount to those crash bars. You would have seen it hanging, and hanging down under the nose. So the split was a really, really good option. And then all you do is you join the compressor and the horn part together with the piece of hose that comes in the kit. Obviously, cut the hose down to size once you know where you're going to have the horn and where you're going to have the compressor. So, that are the two main reasons why we use a split sound bomb. You've got a bike with low suspension, you need to move that away to somewhere else because there's not enough room of travel for your suspension arms and you're going to end up smashing that horn if you go down big dips, especially if you go off-road. Or, you've got upper crash bars fitted to your bike so you need a different option of where you're going to put your sound bomb. However, today we've got a full fat, full version GSA, full range of movement on the suspension, and we can fit the compact sound bomb straight between the forks, loads and loads of room. And that's what we're gonna do now. Now let's say, for instance, you've got a bike and it's not a BMW, you haven't got a Can Smart, or let's say you have got a Can Smart, but you've run out of circuits on your Can Smart, and you wanna run your horn independently. If you want to do that, that's fine, you can do that. You just got to make sure you buy this and this. So this is the adapter, so you can connect your OEM harness to this harness here. And this is the wiring harness, which has got a relay attached to it. And you run this directly to your battery. So when you hit the horn button, it will literally just blast the horn in the same way as if you had it connected to the can smart. And then a lot of people ask the question, well, if I don't have the horn on the can smart, will the lights strobe or not? Yes, they will. You don't even have to have the horn in your Denali bundle. You don't have to have the sound box. You can still have your lights strobing just by hitting your horn button. That is all programmable in the can smart. It's set as a default on your can smart anyway. You hit the horn, your lights will strobe whether you've got a sound bomb on your bike or not. Right, so let's get this compact sound bomb fitted on the bike. I've now jacked the bike up so it's nice and high. If you haven't got a sky lift, then all you need to do is get on your knees, get under there, and you're looking for the two silver Torx bolts going straight through the middle of the frame. It's the bottom one. You need to get that bottom one off. So I'm gonna take this one off now.
Right, so I've got the Denali sound bomb, compact sound bomb, fitted in place. When you tighten it up, you push it all the way back and then you bring it forward just a smidge, just so you know that the cylinder behind it, which is part of your front suspension, is completely clear of this when it's obviously going up and down. When you do this, the, the forks are not interfering with the sound bomb at all. What we're doing here with the sound bomb mount comes a little braided hose protector, which we put on at the very, very last minute. And all that does is prevents the brake line and the wheel speed sensor cable, which goes up through the middle of the bike, just prevents that from chafing against the sound bomb. It only touches the sound bomb. It shouldn't rub against it. It's a very new thing which they've decided to put on, put on there. Not because there's been any reports of the brake hose being damaged, it's just because people have complained over the last couple of years saying it's touching so it's obviously going to cause a problem although it never has done people have asked for this protection to go onto the braided hose which is a nice little touch so just put that on there for safekeeping now the sound bomb is on we now need to wire it up now we're going to connect this up to the can smart so we're not going to go through the sound bomb harness and the adapter like i showed you a moment ago we're going to go up through through the can smart so we're going to put that in a separate video, I'm afraid, because this is going to get a little bit too long. The CanSmart video will come very, very soon because I need to get this bike finished. So this video work will continue and I'll bring the CanSmart video within a day or two of this Soundbomb video being live. So hopefully there should be a link to it in the description straight away. If not, Go on the channel, look at the videos, you'll see it. If it's been any help to you, please give me a thumbs up. If it's been no help to you at all and you hated it, give me a thumbs down. Give me a reason why you didn't like it. And until then, stay safe, blind bars, and I'll see you in the next video.